when Jose Baez took on Casey Anthony as a client, he'd been practicing law for just two years. Well, now he's one of the most talked about defense attorneys in the United States. Baez didn't just say the state's case had too many holes. He created for jurors a whole alternative theory that blamed Kaylee Anthony's death on the girl's grandfather, and he hurled accusations of sexual abuse. But does he really believe all that? Barbara Walters finds out in this exclusive network interview. Jose Baez is probably as close to Casey Anthony as anyone is today. Of course, he believes that his client is innocent, and the jury agreed that she did not murder her baby, finding her not guilty of that most serious charge in just 11 hours of deliberation. And that belief, however, was not shared by most of the people watching the verdict outside the courthouse. Not not outside the Orlando courthouse yesterday. Justice for Kelly! That's not what's supposed to happen. Everybody see the girl is lying! Spectators both shocked and outraged by the not guilty verdict for Casey Anthony. She got no justice, that poor kid. What happened here? On trial for the death of her daughter, Kaylee. The jury got it wrong. Inside, the defendant was crying as the verdict was read, Counsel. hugging her defense team, including this man, Jose Baez. 42-year-old Baez has been Casey Anthony's lead attorney since the beginning of the trial, known to be bombastic, controversial, and some said inexperienced. He has only been practicing law for five years, so it seemed even more unlikely that Baez would be able to keep his client from the death penalty. But he did. The charge of first degree murder, we the jury find the defendant not guilty. Aggravated child abuse, not guilty. Aggravated manslaughter of a child, not guilty. So say we all. The prosecutor has said that as he heard the not guilty, not guilty, he said, wow, wow, wow. What did you say? Thank God. Let me ask you this. You saved Casey Anthony's life. Did she thank you? Absolutely. You have had your ups and downs professionally. It took you a while to become a lawyer, and now you are possibly the most talked about attorney, lawyer in the country. Did you realize the kind of impact this would have on your life? Not really, because I think it's still too soon, and a lot of it is just slowly starting to sink in. But I think after I heard the last not guilty verdict, in court uh, yesterday that I had a moment where I thought to myself, my life may start to change. A lot has changed already for Baez, who spent his early years here in the Bronx. I was born right here, Manhattan. And I uh, grew up partially in the Bronx, raised by my mother and, and uh, three older sisters. You dropped out of high school? Yes. And then how'd you get to your high school? I joined the uh, military when I was 17, and while I was in the military, I got my GED, and then afterwards went back to college, or went to school, college. When did you decide, I'm gonna be a lawyer? <laughs> my last semester of college, I'm glad with the decision. I, I felt that I might be able to do more. I might be able to make more of a difference as a lawyer than I could as a police officer or, or an agent. Little did he know that decision would take him here to the center of the most famous murder case since O.J. Simpson's. Not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. What did you think? How did you feel? Really the happiest moment came after the first not guilty because I knew I had saved her life. And that was really my biggest fear. And I, I, once I got through that, I, I grabbed Casey's hand and I, and I held it. In your heart of hearts, did you think that she would be found not guilty? I thought for a very long time that we had an outstanding chance of getting her an acquittal. I really did. But it was surrounded with a lot of misconceptions. What kind of misconceptions? Well, I think uh, the number one fact that she was a bad mother. I you think, think she was a good mother? I, I think that came out in, in the uh, trial completely. Would you say she was a good mother? Yes, I would. Casey and Kaylee had a very, a very special bond. I think that every single witness who took the stand testified that she was an excellent mother. And I, I see that 
expression on your face, yeah. but, uh, but I've been but, seeing that for the last three years, so it's not, it's not anything new. Many people found the most shocking was that Kaylee was missing for 31 days, and her absence went unreported until Casey's mother, Cindy, called 911 and handed the phone to her daughter. And you last saw her a month ago? 31 days. From 31 days. Why, why are you calling now? Why didn't you call 31 days ago? I've been looking for her and have gone through other resources to try to find her, which is stupid. Does a good mother wait 30 days before reporting a child missing? Well, I think the facts as they played out in the trial, uh, obviously, no. That it, that's, not, that's not the situation that uh, someone uh, should behave. And I, and I made that clear. And I understand that the actions that she took were obviously not things that anyone can condone. Uh, however, this was not a murder case. It never was. And uh, the jury saw that. And, and uh, thankfully, our system worked. How did you get this case in the first place? Uh, you know, I've heard people say I got it because I was lucky. I, I got it because I had a solid reputation in, in the legal community. And Casey had asked someone while she was being processed uh, if they know a good lawyer. Casey uh, reportedly asked uh, uh, an inmate, inmate yes. whom she would recommend, and the inmate said, you. Yes. Yeah. Describe Casey Anthony. You know her now probably better than anyone else. I think Casey is a extremely intelligent, kind, um, warm-hearted individual. I think the biggest thing about Casey is that she's most she's very misunderstood by many people. What do people misunderstand about Casey? They think she's a monster. They think she's a cold-hearted uh, killer and uh, nothing could be further from the truth. What is the truth? The truth is she was someone who had significant issues and while I'm not qualified to really talk about those, yeah. um, I think that all came out in the trial. I think when you took a look at the life she had before this ever, this ever happened and you look at her, uh, her situation and how she, she would deal with things. In her family? Within her family and also within herself, with, within herself, her world, as I called it. If you look at that, what happened in this case isn't so surprising. Are you worried about her mental health? I certainly would like to see her, uh, once she gets out, go through a period of adjustment where she can speak to, speak to some people and, and hopefully grow from there. At what point? Do we stop speculating? The trial began with stunning opening remarks. Baez made surprising revelations that Kaylee actually drowned in the family pool. Kaylee Anthony died on June 16, 2008, when she drowned in her family's swimming pool. And that George Anthony, Casey's father, assisted in the cover-up. She cried and cried and asked for her father's help. And it was shortly thereafter that George did help. George Anthony the denied these allegations. They were shocking stories, but effective. What do you think were your most convincing arguments to the jury? That the central issue was never resolved. And that was, how did Kaylee die? And I think the second uh, significant issue that we were able to convey was, you have to take your emotions out of this. They were there to do a job and to determine the facts under the law. And the law says you can't bring emotion into it. How did Kaylee die? She died on June 16, 2008, when she drowned in the swimming pool. Did I, she you fall know, these, in? These, well, what did you... these tragic accidents happen every day. She found her way into the pool and drowned. This is what Casey told you? I can never comment on what to Okay, but uh, that's Casey what you think happened. She accidentally drowned. Absolutely. In your opening statement, you said that Casey's father, George Anthony, was the one who found the body and that he helped to get rid of it. He has denied this. If it was, as you say, accidental death, then why would George Anthony, who is a former uh, police officer, make an accidental death look like murder? 
With the uh, duct tape and everything? Why would he do that? That was the prosecution's argument. And it was always our contention that, and we contested that entire point numerous times. Uh, we do not think that the way Achilles' remains were found were an accurate representation of how they were six months prior. But again, nobody knows exactly what happened, except Casey, and she wasn't talking. But the explosive theory Baez entered into the case was this one. It all began when Casey was eight years old and her father came into her room and began to touch her inappropriately. Does Jose Baez still think that's true? And why didn't Casey take the stand and tell the jury her story? Still ahead. Welcome back to Primetime Nightline. And now my colleague ABC's Barbara Walters continues her exclusive interview with Casey Anthony's attorney, Jose Baez. Of all the theories presented by defense attorney Jose Baez in the Casey Anthony trial, perhaps the most explosive was this one. And it all began when Casey was eight years old and her father came into her room and began to touch her inappropriately. You said that Casey Anthony hid her daughter's death and lied because she had been, quote, trained to lie by surviving years of sexual abuse by her father. You never were able to present evidence of that at the trial. All I can say about that is that every statement made was done with a good faith basis that we believed the evidence would show. Casey was found guilty of four counts of lying. Does it bother you that she lied and lied and lied and lied? Uh, my, my job is to represent her and not to judge her. The state of Florida in this case has proven every element of every charge in this indictment against Casey Marie Anthony. Do you think the prosecution went too far in asking for first-degree murder, which had the, the death penalty. Do you think they would have been more effective if they had asked for a lesser charge? Absolutely. What do you think they should have asked for? If you're the prosecutor, what should they have asked for? I'm not the prosecutor, uh, come on. so you're not going to get me there. Okay, <laughs> but you think they went too far? Absolutely, absolutely. They have the power to charge anyone for any charge that they feel they can prove. So if they're going to bring it, they better be able to prove it. You know, there is so much antagonism towards her. You won the case, but you know, there's a lot of anger out there. And, and, and one of the main reasons was that she was described as, quote, happy-go-lucky. She went out with friends. She even got a tattoo that talked about a beautiful life. So the feeling is that even though she was acquitted, that she was, that she was very callous. How could she go out dancing and, and partying? and? What do you say about that? What we pr proved in court was that people grieve in many different ways and people respond to trauma in various ways. You're saying that we have to understand that she was indeed grieving and this was how she showed it? Absolutely. Right. you got a two-year-old. Is this how you would grieve? No, I don't think so. But then again, I'm not in that position. But you understand why she did? Absolutely. Why did you make the decision not to put Casey on the stand to testify? Well, in our country, the person accused of a crime has that right, yep. and they make that decision. You understand that your decision to testify or not testify is solely your decision and your decision alone? Yes, sir. Did you agree with her decision? Obviously, you can't argue with the results. Tomorrow, Casey will be sentenced. Do you think that she should be released for time served? We're certainly going to argue that to the judge and, and ask that he do that. What do you think your chances are? I think they're fairly good. Uh, if, if you look at the time that she's done, it's quite significant. Are you worried about her safety? There's such antagonism towards her. I am. I am. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm afraid for her. Will she have bodyguards? 
you know, we're, we're in the process of trying to take that next step for her and assist her in that, in that regard, so I, I, I don't know yet. Do you think that Casey would be safer for the time being in jail? I don't think anyone can say that. No, jail is not a place that uh, people want to be at. Casey was living with her parents. Now she has this difficult relationship with her parents, to say the least. So where is she going to live? Is she going to go back and live with them again? I think it's unfortunately it's too soon to tell that. We don't have the, all of the answers yet. At the end of your post-verdict press conference, you thanked your family. Quiero decir gracias a toda mi gente que me apoyó por, por dentro de este proceso. Particularly your mother in Spanish. What did you say? I just wanted to know that I, I love her and I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here if it weren't for her. You know, I, people when they have success, it's always on the shoulders of someone else. And my mother has been my inspiration and um, she, she means the absolute world to me and I, I wanted her to know it. Tonight on Nightline, a juror speaks a day after finding Casey Anthony not guilty. Juror number three explains the verdict to Nightline in an exclusive interview. Beyond a reasonable doubt, it was like Swiss cheese. There's holes everywhere. She takes us inside the deliberation room Never. and the dramatic twists that led to the acquittal. How he won. Barbara Walters sits down with defense attorney Jose Baez for his take on the victory. Kaylee would never have wanted her mother to suffer this way. And Kaylee certainly would never have wanted her mother to die. And justice served, many remain convinced that Casey Anthony had a hand in her daughter's death. So did the system work in this case? A special edition of Nightline starts right now. From the global resources of ABC News, with Cynthia McFadden and Bill Weir in New York City, and Terry Moran in Orlando, Florida, this is Nightline, July 6th, 2011. Welcome back, and we continue now with another ABC News exclusive, this one with Casey Anthony's defense attorney, Jose Baez, the man who saved Casey Anthony's life. And we're joined now by ABC's Barbara Walters, who today interviewed Baez in his first sit-down interview since the jury rendered their verdict. Jose Baez is probably as close to Casey Anthony as anyone is today. Of course, he believes that his client is innocent. And the jury agreed that she did not murder her baby, finding her not guilty of that most serious charge in just 11 hours of deliberation. And that belief, however, was not shared by most of the people watching the verdict outside the courthouse. As to the charge of first degree murder, we, the jury, find the defendant not guilty. Aggravated child abuse, not guilty. Aggravated manslaughter of a child, not guilty. So say we all. The defendant, Casey Anthony, was crying as the verdict was read, hugging her defense team, including this man, Jose Baez. No evidence, no DNA, no hairs. Known to be bombastic, controversial, and some said inexperienced. He has only been practicing law for five years, so it seemed even more unlikely that Baez would be able to keep his client from the death penalty. But he did. You have had your ups and downs professionally. It took you a while to become a lawyer, and now you are possibly the most talked about attorney, lawyer in the country. Did you realize the kind of impact this would have on your life? Not really, because I think it, it's still too soon, and a lot of it is just slowly starting to sink in. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. What did you think? How did you feel? Really, the happiest moment came after the first not guilty because I knew I had saved her life. And that was really my biggest fear. And I, I, once I got through that, I, I grabbed Casey's hand and I, and I held it. In your heart of hearts, did you think that she would be found not guilty? I thought for a very long time that we had an outstanding chance of getting her an acquittal. But it was surrounded with a lot of misconceptions. What kind of misconceptions? Well, I think uh, the number one fact that she was a bad mother. I you think, think she was a good mother? I, I think that came out in, in the uh, trial completely. Would you say she was a good mother? Yes, I would. 
Casey and Kaylee had a very, a very special bond. I think that every single witness who took the stand testified that she was an excellent mother. What many people found shocking was that Kaylee was missing for 31 days and her absence went unreported until Casey's mother, Cindy Anthony, called 911 and handed the phone to her daughter. And you last saw her a month ago? 31 days. From 31 days. Why, why are you calling now? Why didn't you call 31 days ago? I've been looking for her and have gone through other resources to try to find her, which is stupid. Does a good mother wait 30 days before reporting a child missing? That whole aspect of the Casey Anthony case is, is really just a myth. She, it was never disputed that she passed on July 16, 2008 by both sides. That 31 days has just been kept out there, I think, a lot through various media reports and, and people just can't get that out of their mind. The actions that she took were obviously not things that anyone can condone. Uh, however, this was not a murder case. It never was. And uh, the jury saw that, and, and uh, thankfully our system worked. Describe Casey Anthony. You know her now probably better than anyone else. I think Casey is a extremely intelligent, kind, um, warm-hearted individual. She's very misunderstood by many people. What do people misunderstand about Casey? They think she's a monster. They think she's a cold-hearted uh, killer. And uh, nothing could be further from the truth. The trial began with stunning opening remarks. Baez made surprising revelations. Kaylee Anthony died on June 16, 2008, when she drowned in her family's swimming pool. But the most explosive theory in this case was this one. When Casey was eight years old, her father came into her room and began to touch her inappropriately. You said that Casey Anthony had been, quote, trained to lie by surviving years of sexual abuse by her father. You never were able to present evidence of that. All I can say about that is that every statement made was done with a good faith basis. You know, there is so much antagonism towards her. The feeling is that even though she was acquitted, that she was, that she was very callous. How could she go out dancing and, and partying? And what do you say about that? I think what we proved in court was that people grieve in many different ways and people respond to trauma in various ways. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Tomorrow, Casey Anthony will be sentenced. She may be released in the near future, but she faces a reunion with a family devastated by her trial because her defense called both her parents liars. You saved Casey Anthony's life. Did she thank you? Absolutely. From ABC News Headquarters, this is ABC World News with Diane Sawyer. Good evening. It's as if every place we turn today, people were arguing about the Casey Anthony verdict and what it tells us about the courtroom in America. Tonight, a lot of questions are finally being answered. ABC News has tracked down the men and women at the very center of this case, including a juror who says, and I quote, I did not say she was innocent. I just said there was not enough evidence. And you'll hear more from that juror in a moment. But first, the man who led the charge to free Casey Anthony, Jose Baez, the rookie defense attorney. Earlier today, he spoke exclusively to ABC's Barbara Walters. The prosecutor has said that, as he heard the not guilty, not guilty, he said, wow, wow, wow. What did you say? Thank God. You said there were no winners in this case, and you wanted justice for Casey and for Kaylee. Was this also justice for Kaylee? Absolutely. How? Because I think uh, Kaylee would never have wanted her mother to suffer this way. And Kaylee certainly would never have wanted her mother to die. And um, I don't think we could have dishonored Kaylee's memory with a false conviction. And that's what would have happened if she were found guilty of her murder. You know, there is so much antagonism 
towards her. You won the case, but you know, there's a lot of anger out there. And one of the main reasons was that she was described as, quote, happy-go-lucky. She went out with friends. She even got a tattoo that talked about a beautiful life. So the feeling is that even though she was acquitted, that she was very callous. How could she go out dancing and, and partying? I think what we do in our society is we judge people pretty harshly and we judge them as if we know how we would react if we were in their shoes. But the fact is, we're not in their shoes and we haven't lived the life they've lived. So uh, I, I think when people start judging people that way, I, I think it's a bit unfair. People grieve in many different ways and people respond to trauma in various ways. And the defendant approached Casey is going to be free, if not sooner than later. Are you worried about her safety? I am. I am. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm afraid for her. And I, I don't think it's fair. How do you see Casey's future? I think Casey uh, can, could have been anything she wanted in this world. And I, I, I think there are still plenty of things that Casey can do in life. And I think Casey can be a productive member of society. And Barbara is here now, kind of stunning to hear him say that Kaylee would not have wanted her mother to suffer. But Barbara, how soon does he think that Casey Anthony will leave prison? Well, her lawyer is hoping that tomorrow she'll be set free because she's already served two and a half years of, of her sentence and she's been accused of lying, 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 lying. But whenever Casey Anthony is free, she's gonna have a lot of problems. First of all, she has been living with her mother and father and her father was accused of sexually abusing her, the brother was accused of sexually abusing her. Not gonna be a very happy homecoming so far. And, and beyond that, there is so much anger and antagonism that her lawyer is even considering having bodyguards for her. She has no visible means of support, and it is hardly an easy road. But, Diane, she's free. And as her lawyer said, that's the most important thing. Casey Anthony, as she heard the verdict, hugging her attorneys. Jose Baez right there. He had an exclusive interview with Barbara Walters. And of course, in just a couple of hours, we may find out if Casey Anthony goes free today. As you said, a stunning turn of events from a young woman who was facing the death penalty and now maybe, maybe walking free and when uh, a lot of people thought she'd be behind bars for the rest of her life, conceivably. That's right. And of course, Dan, so. Dan Abrams and Nancy Grace have been with us all through right. uh, this trial. We just heard uh, Jennifer Ford, juror number three, uh, she didn't want to tell us what she thought about Nancy Grace, but she didn't hide her feelings. We'll get Nancy's <laughs> response on that as well. Also, ahead, we're going to have the very latest on the royal road trip. Will and Kate trying to help lift spirits in a devastated town and the big stampede ahead of them that will have them putting on their cowboy hats and of course they're coming to Hollywood. After one day, one more day exactly. in Canada and Calgary, we also have this uh, new trend that's just pretty disturbing. Mm -hmm. uh, kids uh, trying out all these stunts, oh my filming oh. them because <clears throat> they're going to get paid for it. Uh, <gasps> oh. Are you kidding me? Oh. <laughs> So this is happening, it's growing, more and more kids are doing it, more and more kids putting themselves in danger. We'll have a lot more on that coming up. I hope up. my boys aren't watching. Um, all right, we'll have more on that in just a moment. But coming up right now, so many people waiting to see what happens to Casey Anthony. She is headed to court this morning for sentencing on those four convictions of lying to investigators. ABC's Barbara Walters spoke exclusively with her lead attorney, Jose Baez, who weighed in on why he thinks Casey is misunderstood and what kind of mother Casey is. Not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. What did you think? How did you feel? I felt uh, a great sense of relief. I felt um, I was ecstatic for my client. Really the happiest moment came after the first not guilty because I knew I had saved her life. And that was really my biggest fear. And I, I once I got through that, I, I grabbed Casey's hand and I, and I held it. Casey will be sentenced. Do you think that she should be released for time served? We're certainly going to argue that to the judge and, and ask that he do that. What do you think your chances are? I think they're fairly good. Uh, if, if you look at the time that she's done, it's quite significant. 
do you think the prosecution went too far in asking for first degree murder, which had the, the death penalty? Do you think that would have been more effective if they had asked for a lesser charge? Absolutely, absolutely. Describe Casey Anthony. You know her now probably better than anyone else. I think Casey is a extremely intelligent, kind, um, warm-hearted individual. And I think what Casey is uh, most, I think the biggest thing about Casey is that she's most, she's very misunderstood by many people. And I, I just, you know, I wish her the best. And I think that um, I, I, I can't imagine, or I can't even describe, begin to describe what she has been, th what she has gone through over the last three years. Do you think Casey was a good mother? Yes, I do. Do you think Casey wants more children? That I don't know. She has said that she might. Well, I, 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 I've heard people say that uh, uh, through, uh, through some letters that were written to another inmate, but um, I, I really can't say. I'm, I'm her lawyer, and when, when we speak, we speak of legal matters. It's Thursday, July 7th, coming up live on The View. It's the hottest topic in America right now. The co-hosts are giving you their view of the Casey Anthony sentence. And Barbara's showing you an exclusive clip you didn't see on last night's interview when defense attorney Jose Baez takes on his biggest critic, Nancy Grace. Plus, the jury is finally speaking out. And 2020 anchor Chris Cuomo is back to tell you why he says they might have misunderstood the law. There, Bristol Palin's telling all about why she says Levi Johnston stole her virginity. How John McCain threw her family under the bus. And if her mom's made up her mind about a 2012 run for the White House. Come on, and Nickelodeon superstars, the Fresh Beat Band, are here live to perform their latest hit, Here We Go. Here we go. All that, hot topics and more, coming up live on The View. Welcome to The View. We just have to let you know what's been going on. Just uh, uh, hours ago, Casey Anthony was given the maximum sentence of four years in jail. But she's uh, already served, I think, three, a, three years. years. So yes. she'll probably be a free woman by the end of July or early Ooh. August. Wow. So we thought we would let you all know that God. in case you didn't see it. But now, throughout the trial, Casey wore her hair up in a bun. But this morning, she let her hair down, sort of. Sort uh, of a lot from that last picture. Look at this. This is this morning. Right? She was uh, Maria Von Trapp, and now she's Sophia Loren. <laughs> So you, you make anything of the, I, it looks to me like bed hair, but I don't but have that kind of hair, know, so I don't it's know. It's really interesting. I mean, I think the way they tell you to dress, and because when she had it in a bun, it was very subdued. Uh, and she wore for subdued. her scented, when yesterday, uh, she was wearing a, a pink blouse. Yeah, But, but you, you know, did, you know when, when I pastel I, colors, what is she wearing today? Is that another pastel? A blue, a little sweater. Like a sweater. sweater. Oh, like yeah. a sweater. Fine gauge when I was going sweater. through my divorce and I had to go and get on the witness stand, my attorney said, Wait, don't do the hair you do at The View. Wear it back. And they told me to wear pink and pastels. Are you serious? Yeah, and they were like, oh. Come, don't there wear anything There must be some sort of fitting. psychological study yeah, in terms of the psycho. effect it would have on a yeah, jury, absolutely. the appearance that you give. I, mean, I was reading that the Amanda Knox people in the other case in, in Italy, that American over there, that her people gave her wrong information. That they told her to react and to talk and to smile and everything else during oh. the thing. This one was told to just, you know, react, cry a little bit, laugh a little bit, wear your hair. But she was also criticized she was also criticized for not showing emotion until the very and didn't have I know, sentence. but she, yeah. she got so, off. You know, but Chris Rock has been here said that she was actually told by the defense to actually be, he thought, in his opinion, the, the soundtrack to the defense, you know, w wording, you know, and all, everything that they had to say, she would be that soundtrack and nothing for the prosecution iced when the prosecution... You know, if it boils down to forensic evidence, then what's the difference how she behaves or how she looks? Exactly. Well, but well, they did, there's the jurors who are on, who, who have been interviewed, said 
We didn't say she was innocent. We just said the prosecution right. could Did not prove, not their, case. prove right. Right. their case. And it's a victory, no matter how you look at it, uh, for her lawyer. Yeah. Uh, uh, What's interesting is that the things that the jurors yeah, did, and I'll talk about that. Oh, I just before yeah. I just want to quickly say the things that the jurors said didn't, you know, were kind of in circumstance, and you know, didn't matter as much to them. The chloroform, the lying, the partying was what we people right. who weren't jurors really were focused on. You know, she partied, mm -hmm. she lied. The chloroform. But that but does not them. mean that she was a murderer. Right. It could right. mean she was a liar, for which yes. she has been, in, which she faced four counts of guilty. Yes. Just you could say, and she is enormously unpopular and she's going to have a, when we talk to her lawyer she's going to have a very tough time she was living with her parents she can't go maybe she could go back but after all her lawyer accused her father of sexually abusing her but tough to move right. back in again hello daddy this is she has confusing. no job she is but so Barbara, disliked night, she might have to have bodyguards last night Barbara when you had the very first oh, network yeah. interview with the gentleman who literally saved her life yeah. uh, defense attorney Jose Baez yeah. What was it like? Tell us about that interview. Well, I think that there are a great many people who thought that he was very bombastic. He uh, has only had uh, been a lawyer for, I think, like five, five or six years, years yeah. three years of which he has been with her. And he got to her, she got to him because of uh, an inmate said, this is a guy you should use. And he turned out to be a thoughtful, uh, hardly, uh, hardly bombastic, very intelligent, it's and whatever you want to say, mm -hmm. he won. He said that after the first, uh, uh, not guilty, right. he knew then that he'd saved her life, and yeah. everything else after that was, uh, was, was, was a bonus. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there is this whole question that you're all talking about. She is so disliked. Where does she go from here? She's totally unwelcome in the community. She has no means of support. She has no home yet. And what happens when she walks out of there? Does she need bodyguards? It, it just doesn't so, seem to add up, right? Like you're talking to him, it just didn't seem to add up. Well, the whole point is that, they, that she can be all these things. You can right. dislike her as much as possible. Mm. But what they said is emotion does not play a part. Right. It's the facts. And the prosecution was not able to say what happened. And by the way, right. nor was Jose Baez. He said the baby right. drowned. Mm. We don't know under what circumstances. We don't know how she got put in the back. Right. That we will never know unless Casey talks. She did not take the stand. Right. She may write a book. She but you know, deal. but, and then, but so, so she doesn't let, have to speak. I mean, let she me should just show you something because yeah. all of the things that we've talked about, all of the antagonism that people face, uh, we asked him about, and we also asked him. You haven't seen this before about his number one critic, uh, our colleague, uh, well, some of our colleague Nancy Grace. Mm -hmm. So let me take a look at that, and mm -hmm. then we can talk about. it. There is so much antagonism towards her. You won the case, but you know, there's a lot of anger out there. And, and one of the main reasons was that she was described as, quote, happy-go-lucky. She went out with friends. She even got a tattoo that talked about a beautiful life. So the feeling is that even though she was acquitted, that she was that she was very callous. How could she go out dancing and, and partying? And what do you say about that? I think what we do in our society is we judge people pretty harshly and we judge them as if we know how we would react if we were in their shoes but the fact is we're not in their shoes and we haven't lived the life they've lived so uh, I, I think when people start judging people that way I, I think it's a bit unfair. People grieve in many different ways and people respond to trauma in various ways. So now Casey is going to be free, if not sooner, than later. Are you worried about her safety? There's such antagonism towards her. I am. I am. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm afraid for her. And I, I don't think it's fair. I don't think that uh, the general public ha has a real good grasp of what happened in this case. Nobody was more critical of you or Casey than Nancy Grace. Who? Oh. Um, <laughs> is that your answer? <laughs> I haven't even asked my question. So, continue. You no, know I, I'm just... Okay. I mean, this case really got to her and her anger or her disappointment, whatever, in Casey and at you is something that she is still talking about. What do you have to say to that? Well, I think Nancy Grace is an entertainer. I don't consider it serious journalism. Um, some people may find that entertaining. Uh, I do not when it has to deal with someone's life. 
I, I just want to add two things. Number one, this is a very smart lawyer. You know, he has, people have said, oh, he was too bombastic, and he really hadn't been that experienced. He was a very good lawyer. And Nancy, I don't think that Nancy has said she's a journalist. I think she said she's a commentator. She's a I don't, I don't necessarily think Nancy Grace is uh, responsible for assassinating Casey Anthony's character. I think her actions, whether she murdered her child or not, she was found to be acquitted. That's fine. We trust in the judicial system. But in terms of her character, I think those 31 days, whether her child was dead at day one or alive, the fact that she did not take action as everyone well, else that, would, you know, that determines her that's character. But that's, her character. <laughs> but that's what the prosecution was right. trying to point out. But again, I, let me just say this finally. You may dislike her. She is a liar. We can't understand most of the things she did. But right. what, what Jose Baez said was, all of this may be true or what other... But you cannot prove that she murdered no. the child, yeah. and maybe the prosecutor no, should not have gone you know, after Fisher. They also can't be mad church. at Nancy Grace for being angry no. with the behavior no. of the, yeah. this person. We're but not. One of, the jurors, know, right. one, one of the jurors said uh, that they said it was too many unanswered questions. It said, you know, um, there was a dead child in the trunk, and they said it leaves open the question about what was going on in that family, because right. you were talking about Whoopi. 31 days. Once you hear the first story about what, why you There's don't see your grandchild, then the second. Unanswered yeah. questions that involve the whole, in my opinion, let me just say this. Yeah, we know. I don't know. It's the view. I, yeah, it's I just want to make yeah. sure that, that y'all are clear. Because yeah. I really don't care if you email me, but I'm not going to answer no, you. No, but other people have said this about but, the unanswered well, questions. But General they may have said it, but I'm going to reiterate it. You know, f to me, if you look at that 31 day period, you've got to look at the mother, the father, and the girl. That's 31 days where no one did anything. Not just Casey Anthony didn't do anything. The mother didn't do anything. The father didn't do anything. There are too many. true. I mean, they well, did try. Did they they tried what? very often to contact her. No. And every time. I'm sorry. Three numbers you need to know. Your kid goes missing. 911. And wait. And the daughter had all different excuses. I heard all that yesterday. But I'm sorry. I'm a grandmother. Yes. If my grandkids. Right. Four days, if I don't hear from somebody, I'm go I'm going to be in your car. But that was I'm the worst about it. That's true. Yeah. That's what everybody well, that's said. That's what I'm saying. So, so, that's what so, the jury said. They said it was it, the dysfunction so, within yeah, the family. A, I, think it is, I think it is a dysfunctional family. And Jose yeah. kind of... Uh, sort of hinted at the fact that there's some issues in that yeah. in that family. You know, there's, another, no, there's, no. A, there's another thing that came up on July 19th when mm -hmm. the child went missing. Mm -hmm. There was no record of what happened that day. Like uh, someone told me this yesterday, uh, uh, Linda Bowden, who's a, you know Linda, yeah. she's yeah. Michael yeah. Bowden's yeah. wife. She said that they don't know what the phone calls that day, the emails yeah. that they day. They don't know. This, they this, don't know what happened that day. Why? They don't know. How come no one knows anything, and how no, come that was knows. not brought yeah. up? Someone isn't speaking, and that's the problem. Not speaking when your child. There is, therein them. lies the rub. <laughs> now we shall go now, but we're coming back because we are the damn view. <laughs>